Welcome. My name is Karen Schaffhausen. You have just joined us for Improving Online Business Performance, a web seminar series put together in partnership with the D Dakota County CDA and their chamber partners within the region. Thank you for joining us. We're glad you're here. Just a couple of housekeeping items for today to keep in mind. The, please send all questions to Q&A. It's easier for me as the moderator to kind of check and see where the information is located. I am Karen Schaffhausen, as I've already said. I am a business advisor for Dakota County Open to Business. We service all seven metro counties here in the area. Our speaker today is Adam Bengston. He's the owner of Endorse Communications. Adam, thank you so much for joining us today. We're really excited for this second series, second round of what we need to do to kind of manage our business in the, the new normal. So I'll let you take it from here. Wonderful, thank you so much, Karen. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am I'm so used to um, to being able to see faces around a table uh, when talking through something like this. So um, I am going to imagine that everyone has their cup of coffee and is ready to roll this morning. Um, so when I when I spoke with uh, Karen um, uh, last week about um, uh, about sort of what to talk about here, um, I talked a little bit about um, about being a mechanic. Um, I am. Um, I am not a mechanic. I have a, a very, very difficult time uh, understanding what all goes on in an engine. And uh, so I really need it in, in pretty basic terms. Um, and I, uh, I understand that my experience uh, with, uh, with online business, with website development, um, things like that, um, sort of puts me into that mechanic's shoes. So I'm going to really try to keep things um, pretty high level because if it were me, uh, on the other side of this, um, I'd want to make sure that um, that I understood the content, and I don't necessarily have to understand all of the inner workings. Um, so, uh, so that's the the goal for today. Um, just to sort of walk through our uh, our agenda uh, for this morning, um, we are going to look at uh, what it means to uh, find new opportunities in this new normal. What does it mean to uh, sort of quote improve online performance? Um, we'll look at um, defining some goals and, and what can that mean for, for our organization or for our online presence. Um, uh, how can we build on what we have uh, after we sort of take an inventory of, of what that looks like? Um, how can we engage our, our audience, uh, integrate our processes and automate some of our processes, hopefully make this uh, easier? Um, and, uh, and then Finally, how do, we, how do we sell and support? If we're not already doing that, how do we do that online? Uh, and then of course, um, uh, the old line from the back of that shampoo bottle, uh, lather, rinse, repeat, right? So we are going to measure, revise, and repeat. Uh, and that is our, that's our process for this. Um, you know, as I, as I think about the, um, the, uh, the time that we're sort of living in right now, um, what we really are, are yearning for as, as consumers is this sense of connection. Um, in, in general, I believe this has really pushed us forward probably five or eight years, and uh, it's sort of forced us into doing what we otherwise maybe would have. Uh, and so what we used to think of as a, a tool that simply augments uh, what we do uh, is now pretty quickly becoming our, our foundation. It is, um, uh, Karen, you can go to the next, uh, the next slide or two. Um, you know, where normally we might have uh, meetings, we are now uh, holding a, a Skype, right? Something like this, or, um, or a Zoom meeting or a Google Hangout. Um, contracts are not being signed in person. They are, they are digital signatures now. Uh, any demonstrations or hands-on tutorials that we would have done before, uh, are now done uh, either online or perhaps over uh, a YouTube video. Um, and if we have a, a front office or a front door um, to our, our business and uh, someone used to walk into that door, we would greet them right away. We would say, hello, good morning, um, uh, welcome, what brings you in today? And so there are ways that we can do that online as well uh, to greet customers when they, when they first encounter us there. Um, there's a there's a man that I uh, follow. His name is Peter Diamandis, and uh, Peter is a, a futurist, and he does uh, he does a lot of talking about um, uh, what do what do business opportunities look like uh, in in the future. And this is long before we sort of hit this uh, this coronavirus uh, pandemic. But he said the world's biggest 
challenges are really the world's biggest business opportunities. And if you want to make a million dollars, solve a problem for a billion people. Um, and, uh, and so that's really what we, what we sort of have to keep our eye on. Um, and sometimes it is difficult to find that opportunity um, in the challenge, but um, uh, we're going to take a look at some ways that uh, the folks have done that. So if anyone has been to Target, uh, or Walmart or Aldi or uh, anywhere that you do your shopping, you likely saw some bare shelves uh, over the past couple of weeks. Um, the first thing um, that my wife reported to me was, holy cow, there was no toilet paper at all. And, um, and I thought to myself, my gosh, what are, uh, what are we all doing? What are we all hoarding toilet paper for? But alas, um, uh, it was there. And this really, um, uh, this is opportunity for someone. Um, and one company that really jumped on this and said, this is our, this is our moment to shine uh, is Tushy. And uh, so Tushy, if you're not familiar, uh, makes a, an attachment for, uh, for the, the common toilet. And uh, so instead of using toilet paper, um, it is a, it's a, a bidet attachment. And, and um, they saw incredible sales from this. Uh, they started to push out uh, their message through social media, uh, through their website. Um, through just about every channel, and um, they were so successful in this that they ended up uh, selling out. And if you go to their uh, their site now, uh, you will see a message that says, uh, "Good news! We love to spread good news. Uh, we are uh, Tushy is back in stock." And um, uh, so this is you know this is one example of where that opportunity is has really shown itself. A second. Um, is for a company in Owatonna, Minnesota, um, called Wenger Corporation. And Wenger Corporation typically makes um, musical equipment uh, and theater equipment for schools and performing arts centers uh, around the world. So uh, if you went into your child's um, uh, or thought about your, your own band room or your choral room uh, when you were growing up and in school, you likely would have seen lots of uh, Wenger products. They make the music chairs, they make music stands, they make risers and uh, acoustical shells and all sorts of things. Well, what they decided to do was, um, how can we sort of capture this as an opportunity? And so uh, Wenger took, their, um, took a look at what their products are and said, how can we help these people that are now trying to learn from home? Um, they're not going to be in a classroom setting uh, using our products. They're going to be at home um, using our products. And so they've put together this um, what they're calling their home practice kit. Um, and so we developed a, uh, a landing page uh, to, to sort of promote that and allow people to order that. Uh, and if they were ready to order, just to um, just, just find out a little bit more about it. Uh, so you see a form there on the right that goes right into, uh, right into Wenger's Salesforce for a, uh, a representative to follow up. Um, so what questions can we ask when we're talking about our own business opportunities? Um, how, can we, uh, how can we discover those? Um, so one question is, are there other audiences um, that, that need our help? Different maybe from uh, who we typically serve. Can our offerings be repurposed at all? Um, is there something that our audience can, can, can reuse in a different way? Is there something that we could deliver digitally uh, where otherwise we, we might have delivered uh, that service or that product in person? Um, and, um, and is there any way that this new normal uh, has changed the market for our, uh, for our products or our services? Um, so second, uh, now to sort of define performance, right? Um, how, do we, how do we define that? Um, it's really important to ask at the outset who is it that we're trying to help? When I talk to my kids about, um, about what it means to be a grown up, they are uh, in first grade and, and, and preschool, um, I just really try to tell them, uh, listen, uh, life is about helping people. And um, it is our job to try to seek out folks that we can help and help them do something that they might not otherwise be able to do on their own. Um, so it's really important to ask, uh, who is it that we're trying to help? What kind of help do they need, maybe specifically right now uh, in this new normal? Uh, how can we leverage the tools um, to deliver that? And what would success look like? And really spend some time thinking about that. If we're looking at defining performance and improving online performance, what does that success look like? Um, uh, and then, you know, when it comes to defining our goals, that success might look like, uh, well, we want to focus more on uh, supporting our customers, in which case we might look at 
uh, the number of visits to our frequently asked questions page or our tutorial section maybe on YouTube. Uh, we might want to reach a new audience, in which case we might start to measure um, the number of new inquiries that we, ha we have from our website. Uh, we might simply want to increase the sales that we do uh, on a weekly basis uh, from our website if it's something that we sell online. Uh, so the first thing to do, of course, is uh, let's get a baseline, right? How many visitors are we seeing? How often are they engaging with us? How are people finding us right now? Uh, and how are we connecting with them? And um, uh, so some of those measurements might look like uh, number of likes or follows that we have on a uh, social media platform like Facebook or Twitter, uh, number of visitors that we might have, number of comments that we might be getting, uh, whether those are on a blog post or on a, a Facebook post, um, number of sales, of course, number of page views, number of different social interactions, how long people are, are spending on our site, their session duration. So there's all sorts of different metrics that we can use. It's really important that we sort of hone in on, on what it is that is, is important to our business, right? Uh, so the first step then is to, to take a digital inventory. What, what are our digital assets that we even have? Um, you know, when we think about online business, um, we might sort of jump right to, oh, it's my website. Well, your website is certainly one part of that, um, but it's not the whole package, right? Uh, you might have a Facebook page. You might have a Twitter, um, a Twitter uh, uh, set up for, uh, for your business as well. You might have Google Business Profile. You might have email marketing lists filled with, um, filled with contacts that are on your prospect list or on your customer list um, that you use with a, a service like Constant Contact or MailChimp. There are other digital assets, of course, um, uh, that we can take from being a, an in-person uh, asset and, uh, and, and be able to put those into some sort of an online or, or digital presence. So those might be case studies or customer stories, um, testimonials. You know, when I look at a, uh, a website, I not only want to see what is it that that company is, uh, is doing and says that they're good at, but also, how do we know um, that, they, uh, that they do that well? And it's really through those testimonials. Um, are there any videos or how-to demonstrations that we have or other brochures uh, that we can put on, uh, on our website, even if it's in such a simple form as a, a PDF? So we're gonna walk through some examples um, of what it really means to then engage our audience. Um, so we've got an example here, this is REI. Um, it's one of my favorite stores to wander through, and of course, all their stores are closed right now. But in the meantime, um, they've uh, they've got this wonderful section um, that that is really sort of meant to keep people engaged with uh, with how to articles. Um, I love to go camping. I've been uh, camping once with my family, <laughs> which makes me an enthusiast, uh, but not an expert yet. And uh, so I'm looking for all the advice that uh, that I can get on that. Um, REI does a really, really wonderful job of engaging their audience by offering these types of things on there. Um, they also um, they also don't fail to uh, to mention that we are in this pandemic, right? And um, and so the uh, the things that their customers, people like me, are looking for is how can we sort of continue to be outside, be outdoors while we are doing this social distancing? Um, and one of the one of my favorite questions uh, that they ask on their side is, "What will you do first when this passes?" And um, and so they've got some ideas there. They're really inviting us to engage with them. Um, this is uh, this is another way that that REI engages. They have uh, these conversations, and so these really re revolve around topics. These are not necessarily blog posts. These are a spot where uh, where folks can share their ideas, their experiences with one another, uh, and have more of a uh, a discussion. Uh, and then, of course, we want to engage in uh, or engage our audience by encouraging them to share what it is that we do. Right. Um, uh, the old sort of tell a friend, send your friends. We'd uh, we'd love to work with them. Uh, so this is an example from Walmart Grocery. I'm not sure if any of you have used their service um, uh, recently, but um, their their online grocery pickup uh, has been amazing. And so they uh, they offer to give a um, a ten dollar bump to anyone that uh, that signs up and the person that referred them. Uh, we want to talk about um, integrating and automating. Um, so what do we what do we think about when we're thinking about integrating something? Uh, well, simply let's integrate our various digital assets and sort of uh, blend them together a little bit. That might mean when we make a post on social media, 
let's use some content from the website. Uh, it might mean um, uh, it might mean on our website um, including or embedding uh, some of our social media content, not simply just links. Uh, of course, integrating uh, email marketing, both from a um, sending an email that links to our site, uh, and then also having some sign-up opportunities um, on our site to get onto that email list, and uh, and then integrating our CRM. So some examples of of uh, folks that are doing that well. Uh, you may have seen the the True North, uh, excuse me, the True North campaign from uh, the Minnesota Department of Tourism. So this uh, this is a page that's showing uh, Instagram feed sort of uh, fed by uh, by the general public that are tagging their photos with this. Uh, it's a really nice way to involve the, the general public in, uh, in what this looks like. Um, so they've got that on their site. The Apple Valley Chamber of Commerce uh, was looking for a way that they could uh, uh, include their Facebook latest updates on their, their Chamber homepage. And one of the reasons for that was, well, we're sharing all this various information about uh, what's happening with COVID-19, how that's impacting the business community. We really don't want to make it in two different places. So is there a way that we can integrate that and automate that? And so we've got their latest news that automatically populates from Facebook uh, right there on their homepage. Uh, and then of course we want to have, um, or we want to have some, uh, some email marketing uh, signup opportunities. It may be that someone is already on our list, um, but uh, it is a good idea to give people a way that they can connect with us. Um, uh, looking at uh, CRMs, um, you know, it's not just emails that we are, uh, that we're collecting anymore. It is uh, text messages. I don't know about you, but I get, um, I sort of belong to uh, lots of different uh, text message groups. And so uh, Vera Bradley has a, a spot at the bottom of their site that says text, uh, text VB to 82275 uh, and it'll automatically enroll you. Um, Vera Bradley then of course uh, uses your phone number to push out some of their promotions. Um, uh, your, your Google My Business profile, if you don't have one already, um, I would really encourage you to get one. Um, they are free. It is something that shows up um, in, uh, in the search engine fairly prominently. It really helps with, uh, with SEO. Um, this is a, an easy resource for people to use um, to, uh, to really give their presence a boost. Um, and then uh, finally, what kind of integration tools can we use? Uh, so there are two that I really recommend. Um, uh, Zapier is one and Messenger uh, is another. Zapier is, um, is a tool that will allow you to connect more than one sort of application um, and, and allow one application to trigger an event in another. Uh, so you might use that as a, um, a way to put together Gravity Forms, which is a, a pretty common plugin uh, for WordPress sites, and automatically add the people that fill that out to your constant contact list, for instance. Uh, you might add them to a spreadsheet. You might want to get an email when someone fills something out. Um, Zapier is an incredibly powerful uh, tool to use. I'd encourage you to check that out. Um, the second there is, uh, is Facebook Messenger. And uh, so when we talk about um, reaching our audience, it's really important that we reach them where they're at. Um, but know that they might be connected in other ways as well. Um, so this is a, uh, one example of how you can actually embed Facebook uh, Messenger right into your own website so that when someone is visiting your site, um, they, can, they can engage with you right on Facebook Messenger without having to leave your site. Um, so it's there just as a, uh, as a chat tool. Uh, so quickly, let's talk about uh, some various platforms that we can use to, uh, to sell online um, and, and support our customers. Um, some of my favorites here, uh, and there are a zillion, but some of my favorites are Square, uh, Magento, Shopify. Um, those three are, are really great e-commerce options. Um, they, most of them provide a, um, a very robust uh, back end and something that, that is sort of automatically secure. Uh, and so that's not something that you have to take care of. And most sites uh, in the world are built on WordPress and there's a popular um, e-commerce plugin for that called WooCommerce. Um, uh, and so we're just gonna walk through sort of what those can look like. Um, so first taking, uh, taking Magento. Magento is not just a, um, uh, an e-commerce system, it's also a content management system. So your whole site can be built in that. Um, these are very, very customizable. 
Um, they are they're a wonderful option to be able to integrate with your uh, CRM system, whether that's uh, Salesforce or uh, anything else really that you're using to manage your, your, uh, your customers and your prospects. Um, uh, looking at Shopify, Shopify is another that, uh, that really does a very, very good job of making a, um, an e-commerce system that is sort of pre-built for you so that you don't have to worry about what does the checkout process look like? Uh, how do I know this is secure? How do I process payments? Um, so these are, uh, this is a great option uh, if you just want something that really can plug and play. Um, uh, and then uh, looking at, at WordPress and WooCommerce as well, um, these are, uh, this is an excellent option, especially if, um, especially if you're not selling directly online. WordPress is very, very easy to set up. It's very uh, inexpensive to host. And uh, it's very easy to maintain, even if you are sort of not uh, used to maintaining a, uh, a website. Um, so a word about SEO. Um, uh, and that seems to be always the, the big question. I think of it uh, a little bit this way. So uh, when, I was, when I was young, um, uh, the yellow pages were still a, a thing that I, would, uh, that I would pull out quite often. And um, I would look for something that caught my eye, right? I would flip to the, uh, the plumber section, for instance, when I was looking for uh, help with that. And I would um, I'd look for something that caught my eye. Um, that meant that um, I didn't have to be, or that plumber that I, that I called didn't have to be right at the top of that list, but it had to be in the book. Uh, and so, um, so when we think about SEO, um, there are some really, there's some real low hanging fruit that we can do. Um, if we're using, um, if we're using a, a site or a platform like WordPress, there are various uh, SEO plugins like Yoast or all in one SEO that we can utilize to, uh, to plug in and it will sort of walk us through a, a wizard to make sure that we've got all of our sort of ducks in a row. Um, the second is, if we haven't already, we should uh, notify Google or Yahoo or Bing um, about uh, the existence of our site. Uh, there's an easy way to do that. Um, if, uh, if you can't do it on your own, you can contact your web developer, you contact a, a person like us um, or a company like ours, and, uh, and we can help you through that as well. Um, but it's important that we tell the search engines, hey, I've got a website and um, this is where it is. These are the pages that I have. Um, uh, from there, really, uh, Google, Yahoo, Bing, they, they take it from there and they, they'll read through your site uh, with, uh, with their bots and figure out what your site is about. Um, uh, we can use a tool like SEMrush to find, uh, are there broken links that we have? Are there pages that aren't formatted uh, well for SEO? Uh, SEMrush is a, uh, is a paid service, um, but well worth it um, to, to measure at least on the front end. Uh, and then last, when we're talking about um, uh, SEO, we also have to think about um, performance. How snappy, how responsive is our site? If we um, if we want it to really be snappy, we need to either have some some great hosting, or try something like Cloudflare. Cloudflare is a service that will cache all of your your static content, uh, your big images, the, uh, videos, things that might take a long time to to load, and really speeds it up. Um, I've seen uh, improvements of about ninety percent with those. Uh, and last, then, what is the, what's the process that we can use to sort of test our content, um, see how that's performing, and, uh, and then repeat that process? And just with any, like with anything else, our, um, our goal here is not to have perfection uh, right away. Our goal is to make progress and to know that um, our customer needs are going to constantly change. That means that our approach to the, um, our online presence needs to change. So looking at uh, Google Analytics, this is really, you know, this is our main measurement tool. If you don't have Google Analytics installed, it's an easy thing to do. Uh, again, you could contact a, uh, a developer or a company like ours to, uh, to help you get this in place. But this is a, it's a wealth of, um, of information. Uh, how long are people spending on our site? How can they get to our, uh, or how are people finding our site? Are they uh, searching with keywords? Are they linking from a different site? Are they coming from social media? Um, Google Analytics is going to uh, show you all those things. If we are sending out a, um, uh, a lot of uh, emails or uh, perhaps linking from, from other places, we can even use UTM tags. This is a really neat tool that we can use to, um, to sort of create more than, one, uh, more than one link for the same page. Uh, and so each one of these can, uh, can be used to add UTM parameters or UTM tags 
um, that we can then measure within uh, within our our Google Analytics. Uh, and so this might uh, we might set this up to measure from a an email standpoint or from a social standpoint. Uh, if we want to say, I want to know if people are clicking on this particular ad or this other ad. Um, we can we can use UTM parameters uh, for that as well. And so I've included a link there. Uh, this is SEM Rush. Um, this is just a sort of a, a dashboard look at at what their uh, what their site looks like. Um, but again, this is a, a very, very well worth it tool to use at least for a month or two um, to just find out are there any big issues uh, that are affecting our, um, that's affecting our SEO. Uh, and then finally, you know, um, when we are looking at uh, those things that we are measuring, it's really important for us to add some variation, right? So um, uh, Google uh, Marketing Platform includes something called Google Optimize. This is a way that uh, we can dynamically change what is on uh, what, what's on the page when someone sees it, uh, and Google will actually um, change this for for us on the fly. So, for instance, we might want to change a, a headline or the way that a button looks. Uh, maybe the button at the top. Maybe the button at the bottom. Uh, maybe we want to change some uh, some various colors. Google can actually make those changes for us if we define them ahead of time, and then we can decide and tell Google. Hey, I want to test um, test this out, and so go ahead and take all of my traffic, and let's split this up into thirds, uh, and e each third would see a different variation, and then we can go back and we can uh, we can measure how each one of those performed. If there was a clear favorite, perhaps we just implement that change uh, site wide, and so that is really the the revision process that we can use. Um, so um, you know we we look at revising uh, what are our headlines what are what can be some of our calls to action uh, what are our buttons both what do they say what do they look like if we use a a label like um, uh, sign up here or let's go or I'm excited sign me up um, you know those are those are each going to invoke a uh, a different type of emotion a different type of response uh, we can look at varying our page layouts, uh, even the colors that we're using, um, uh, that, has a, that has an enormous impact. Um, so we, we walk through here, um, how do we find some new opportunities? What does it mean? How do we sort of define um, what does it mean to uh, improve our online business performance? Um, take an inventory of what we have uh, and, and build upon that. What does it mean to engage our audience or some, some of the ways that we can do that? Uh, and then uh, how can we work smarter and not harder, right? Um, how can we uh, integrate some of our systems and automate some of our systems? Uh, and then um, uh, if we're not already, how can we sell uh, without, uh, without lots of legwork, getting all set? Um, and, uh, and really that, that process then is sort of repeated over and over and over. Um, this is a, uh, it's a time when we are all really forced to do things very, very differently. And my gut tells me uh, in about uh, five months, we are going to see uh, another change that, uh, that really forces us to revisit what is it that we are, uh, what is it that we're trying to focus on at that point. So, um, so you know, again, let's think about how we can help people. Um, are there new folks that we can help? And, um, uh, and, uh, and go from there. So, We've got just a couple of minutes or so. If there's any questions at all, I'm happy to, uh, to take one. Adam, thank you so much. I feel like we've just sprinted through so much content. You did such yeah. a great job. So one of the things that uh, we have a question about is, if I'm a business that historically has not engaged my customers online, mm -hmm. what is something simple for me to do? Because I'm not an online expert, and at this mm -hmm. moment, I don't have lots of extra cash floating around. Sure. What is one or two things that you would encourage or suggest a business like that do? Yeah, so um, so if you don't have anything uh, right now, um, I guess my my first inclination would be to try to figure out where is your where is your audience already at, right? If you were trying to reach an audience, um, are they on Facebook? Are they on Instagram? Are they on a social platform? Those are really easy and very very um, inexpensive to set up. You can engage a, a great following from there, and then a second probably is just to um, to use a, a site. Or excuse me, a platform um, like some of these uh, that we looked at. Most of those are free uh, to use. Excuse me. Um, uh, and there's a there's a charge if you were to actually sell something through that site uh, to process the credit cards. Uh, but in most cases, you can you can do that for free 
uh, and get up, get set up with something, and then uh, when your cash flow is in a better position, uh, build upon that. Lovely. Well, with that, we are at the 8.30 mark. I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Adam, this is exceedingly fabulous information. Super grateful for you to take your time and share your thoughts with us today. I'd like to thank each of you for participating. Many of you have had a chance to participate in all seven web seminars. We're grateful that you were here. We're hoping that it was helpful. Thank you uh, for the Dakota County CDA and their chamber members for helping facilitate this. And lastly, a little bit about Open to Business. We are a nonprofit profit contracted by the seven metro counties to provide free business cult consulting. Oof, I need my coffee and gap financing. So if you've got any questions today with regard to the federal loan programs coming out or how to, help, how to help manage your business as they navigate through this time, we are here for you as a free business service. This recording will be shared with both the county partners in the cities and posted on their websites. Thank you again for everybody for participating and have a great day. Thanks again, Adam. Take care. Thanks, everyone.